Okay, in this tutorial we'll be looking at how to use the Cryptomat in Blender 2.8 uh, and in this scene we've got several spheres all of the spheres and the Suzanne have got different materials apart from the two yellow spheres, they share the same material and the red sphere and blue sphere are children of the green sphere so if I move the green sphere they'll move alongside with it so to set the cryptomat up, what you need to do is go to the uh, properties panel and then go to the view layers property, which is this one. And then scroll down a little bit and you've got the cryptomat options here. So the object one will create um, the ability in the compositor to select individual objects so that you can make uh, changes to them. The material will enable you to select anything that's got the same material and the asset will enable you to select full hierarchies for example the blue, green and red spheres so I'll quickly render this in fact firstly we'll activate these three options and then render it okay so that's rendered and then go over to the compositor by clicking the compositing workspace at the top and then if you don't see this you need to click on use nodes and also make sure backdrop is enabled at the top so the first thing to do to use the cryptomat is to put down a cryptomat node so connect up the object cryptomat to this top one and then do the same for the other two so this one's for the materials and then the last one is for the uh, hierarchies so that's called asset Okay, we still won't see anything because we need to put down a viewer node. So use a split viewer. And we also need to connect the image to each of the image inputs. Okay, and then we'll plug the output from the cryptomat of the image uh, output into the split viewer and we'll do the same for the pick as well and then if we turn this to 100 in the split viewer we can then see we've got the results of the cryptomat uh, and this is just so that you can pick which object you want to uh, isolate okay so I'll just put down one more viewer just a normal viewer this time just so we can see the image and if you click on the viewer then that will uh, activate it and uh, put its output into the backdrop so click back onto this one now if you want to isolate an individual object uh, we will click on uh, the add button and then choose an object that we want to isolate so I'll isolate uh, this sphere and then if we scroll this back to zero you can see that we've isolated just the sphere and it will also create a mask as well uh, so you can uh, use that if you wish it also okay and if we do the same for the cryptomat for the materials put the image into the top and then the picker into the bottom and then click on this viewer so that it enables it and then turn it to 100 so that we get the bottom input of the two so 0 is the top input 100 is the uh, bottom input okay and uh, right so in this scenario uh, we'll do the same again so we'll click on the add uh, button to get the eyedropper and then we'll choose something uh, like this one for example and then turn this back to zero to get the top input and we've isolated this sphere and that's because this sphere is the only object in the scene 
that has got that material. So if you want to uh, remove that, we click on the remove button and then click on the sphere again and that won't actually work. And the reason is you need to be, uh, the the cryptomat picker uh, material needs to be visible. So turn this to 100 again and then choose remove again and I think it was this one. Yeah, and that's removed it from this little box here. You can also just delete it uh, by uh, highlighting what's inside there and clicking delete. Okay, uh, so this time we'll pick the um, an object that's a, a material rather that's got um, is assigned to multiple objects. In this case, the yellow sphere. So back onto this split viewer, so we can see the picker, and then click on the add and then choose one of either one of these two spheres and then you can see if we put this back to zero we've um, isolated just the yellow spheres anything that's containing the same material uh, as the item that we've picked okay and lastly we've got the cryptomat for the assets so plug that into the top and plug the picker into the bottom and then we'll turn that to 100 so we can see it uh, and this time if we click on add and we add uh, this sphere and turn this back to zero we're getting just that one sphere um, because this sphere isn't part of the hierarchy it doesn't have a parent and it doesn't have any children either so put it back to the uh, pick view just remove that one and then we'll choose something that does have a hierarchy such as uh, this sphere here and if we turn that back to zero you can see you've got the full uh, hierarchy um, isolated for that one. So to use it, uh, for example, say you want to add a glare just to the monkey and only to the bright parts uh, of the reflection, you'd put down a glare node and then you would connect the image from the crypto map which is the isolated image and then we'll put down another viewer so I'll just copy the top one shift D put that over there and if we plug this in over here and then I, uh, enable that one you won't see anything at the moment so just turn off use alpha okay and you'll notice we're still seeing all three of the objects and that's because we need to put down a alpha convert and put that there and leave it on straight to pre-multiplied and then if we turn up the fade on this and also uh, the mix value to one so that we only get the glare and then we'll turn the threshold down so that we, it's something within the image is bright enough to get the glare, put it down to 0 0.08 okay and just turn up the iterations number of streaks ah and also what I didn't do if we just connect this back up into the top viewer we need to select something so we'll select the monkey and then if we go back to the viewer over here you'll see we are getting the glare now just on the monkey if this was muted or wasn't there then you'd be getting the glare on everything as well as the actual uh, RGB values of the original image so unmute that okay and we also want to get rid of the black and leave us only with the streaks so to do that put down a uh, alpha a set alpha and then plug that in there and then we'll plug the output not only into the image but also into the alpha input and then if we turn back on use alpha briefly you'll see that we are just getting the glare now I'll leave the alpha off so that we can see the glare uh, more easily and then you can make any tweaks for example if you want to make that more faded you can turn that down and turn it right up you'll get no fading whatsoever 
which seems to be the wrong way around to me, but uh, there you are. Okay, and you'll notice if we turn the alpha convert from um, straight to pre-multiplied to pre-multiplied to straight, we're actually getting a lot of glare around the edge. And that's because in this, um, just duplicate this viewer, in the image that's been fed into the glare, you'll notice we're getting now sort of a very strong edge around the object. And that's because this needs to be set to straight to pre-multiplied. And then you'll see you're not getting that um, harsh edge around the, the object. Okay, so put it back to this one. And what we now need to do is turn back on use alpha. And we want to add that glare over the original image. To do that, put down a alpha over. And the bottom slot is what will be in front. And the top slot is what will be behind. So put the image into the top slot. And then we'll put the glare into the bottom slot. And then we'll plug this into the viewer and then select this uh, viewer and then just turn on use alpha. And it's not particularly visible, but it, it is there. If you want to increase that, then you can also turn this fade up a little bit and you'll see you're starting to get it. And if you want to keep the fade uh, the same sort of size, but increase the intensity as well, what you can also do is just put down a, a mix uh, a mix node, plug that into the image, okay, and then we'll put in a, a value, plug that into the bottom one, and then we'll change this to multiply, so that it will multiply the value of whatever's coming out of there by the value that you've got in here. So if I turn that up to 10, and you'll see that that gets much stronger. And you, you can also then tweak the fade as well, just to get it you know, exactly how you wanted it. Um, if you turn the threshold to zero, then the glare is going to be applied to the entire monkey. So we'll turn the threshold to 0.5, then it won't get, it'll only get applied to the brightest parts, a bit too high, so 0.1. And then you see you're getting those glares just on the brightest parts of the uh, image that's coming out of the crypto mat. So, yep, that's how you would use the crypto mat and a use case scenario as well. So, thanks for watching and uh, leave any comments uh, below and I'll uh, I'll take a look at those and answer any questions uh, if, if there are any. Thanks very much.